Hello, welcome to to Dad to Dad Puzzles podcast. Today we have uh, our second guest, special guest, Dr. Derek Robinson. We are so honored to have you here today, sir. Um, Dr. Robinson, you know, Dr. Robinson is a board certified physician in emergency medicine and author of the new book, Improbable MD: From the Bayou to the Boardroom. He is a vice president and chief medical officer at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois a division of Healthcare Service Corporation, the nation's largest non-investor owned a health insurance company. In this role, he leads the care management operations division and uh, serves as the company's primary healthcare expert. Dr. Robinson continues to provide clinical care to the patients in the ER at the University of Illinois, Chicago, where he is a visiting clinical associate professor of uh, emergency medicine. His unique perspective on the complexities of healthcare, including his past service as a healthcare federal regulator, has enabled him to influence the transformation of healthcare for Americans. He has been featured on WTTW, WMAQ, WLS TV, BNC, and other news outlets discussing important healthcare issues and social topics. As a physician executive, Dr. Robinson has been a champion for weaving equity into the fabric business priorities to advance both financial returns and health outcomes. Over the years, he has brought together diverse stakeholders to align a focus on health equity, de uh, develop business incentives to catalyze action, and to share best practices across organizations for durable change. His leadership has led to the groundbreaking advancements in value-based care pro uh, programs and pioneering organizational partnerships. From an early age, Dr. Robinson has been driven to make the world a better place for others, especially for the marginalized. He attributes his career success and ability to overcome life's obstacles to the support provided to him by others along his journey. Across uh, a nearly two decades, you know, like two decades record of giving back, Dr. Robinson has led community efforts at the local, state, and national levels to help young people move up the social mobility ladder through advancements in education and career preparation. From uh, 2006 to 2011, he served as national chairman of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Inc. Achievement Academy program, which uh, provided a network for, of mentoring and structural support to college men applying to graduate and professional schools. As a local volunteer, he has mentored hundreds of underrepresented minority high school boys while serving as Associate Executive Director of the Kappa Leadership Institute Chicago from 2006 to 2017. This work enabled at risk youth across Chicago to overcome social and structural barriers to a college education inspiring them to realize their fullest potential. In 2020, Savoy Magazine recognized Dr. Robinson in its list of 2020 most influential black executives in corporate America. Uh, Dr. Robinson is the recipient of numerous awards, including Crane's Chicago Business 40 Under 40, 40 Games Changers Under 40, Area Investments, and the 2019 Leadership in Healthcare Award by National Medical Fellowships, Inc. Dr. Rob. Dr. Robinson is a member of the Economic Club of Chicago, where he is the 2020-2022 Chairman of the Young Leaders Committee. A native of Shreveport, Louisiana, Dr. Robinson resides in Chicago, Illinois, with his wife and two sons. When he is not working, he enjoys swimming, cycling, fishing, and spending time outdoors. He also volunteers as an influential with uh, Illinois Swimming and is a nationally certified judge with the United States Swimming. Dr. Robinson is a member of the Office of Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Committee at the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education and is a vice chairman of the Board of Trustees at Xavier University of Louisiana. Dr. Robinson is a board certified by the American Board of Emergency Medicine and holds degrees from Xavier University of Louisiana, Howard University College of Medicine, and the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. Yes, sir. And uh, let me see here. We have 
there is so much more that we can go about to, you can't to say talk about <laughs> exactly uh, there's there's so much to talk about you sir and and really we we are so honored to have you and and you know i'm sure many you know like you know like many dads at different you know like stages they will appreciate you joining and sharing your wisdom to them as well yeah dr johnny it's a pleasure to be with you today and uh certainly here on dad puzzles i'm here as a dad you know representing my perspective as an individual so not necessarily as a executive at my job or any of the other organizations that i'm affiliated with but really pleased to be a part of this village that you're creating uh through the podcast and uh, look forward to our discussion today i i appreciate that thank you so much sir you know you know that that makes it at ease because some people will say wait a second these people what are they talking about they're they're talking about you know like you know what you know like what they do no i want to know about the fatherhood you know so can you share a little bit about fatherhood what's your concept of fatherhood sir well, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the journey. I can still remember when it seems like my life changed, right? Um, and you've got that, that little one right there in front of right. you and that awesome uh, sort of wave of responsibility and accountability kind of comes over you because now it's no longer, you know, you and your spouse, but you've got uh, a child that's dependent on you for everything that they need. Uh, right. And so that certainly has been a journey. I've even watched myself evolve as a... Um, as an individual in terms of, you know, my risk tolerance and uh, my approach to things. They've, they've evolved, as, and, and as the kids have gotten older, they've shifted a bit as well. But it's, right. uh, it's more than a notion to take on that responsibility, um, but it's an awesome blessing as well, you know, to be able to really pour into, uh, into your kids and watch them develop, watch them test you every day, I feel like, since my boys were two it's been like a mind game every day <laughs> how far how far can we push mom how far can we push dad absolutely um how many different angles can we try to solve the, the same challenge right uh, so it's so it's been a a, a mind game <laughs> with right, them right. as well right uh, but but i've enjoyed it and i wouldn't um i wouldn't trade it for the world and uh, appreciate uh god blessing us with the the opportunity and the responsibility of of raising awesome. young people Awesome, awesome. How old are they right now? So right now, I have, uh, two boys. They're uh, nine and eleven, so fourth okay, okay. grade and sixth grade. So we are okay. far out of diapers. Right, and, right. Uh, <laughs> you know, they can get up and you know, fix their own food and right. dress That's themselves. Good. You know. That's good. I, I remember back in the day when they were crawling. I was like, you know, one day I'm going to come home mm -hmm. and my kids going to walk down the hallway and meet me at the back door. <laughs> and that happened, and it was so fulfilling Fun. and uh -huh. ex exciting. You know, to right, walk. Right. You know. That's right. Um, and then it was like, man, if he could just go to the bathroom and poop. You know, so I remember, that, I remember the first time my oldest son went to the toilet and pooped, and then it was another couple of months before right, he right. did it again. Right, but, right. But they're milestones, things that, right. you, that you experience and Absolutely. Uh, it comes to appreciate. Yeah. Absolutely. Those are the joys of this, you know. And, and you, know, uh, it, you know, I think... From, from from your career, you know, I guess if you're a teacher or like in your, you know, like in your asp, you know, like in your job as a, you know, you know, as emergency doc, you teach, you know, like you know the, you know, like the residents, the medical students. I'm sure them they play a role as well because you know the kids always when they ask you those questions, they make you think, oh, what a second, I have to know my stuff. You ask me about this, okay, so let me let me find out. You know, so, you know, like sometimes we take things for for granted, but they make us really pay attention to what is going on. Yeah, absolutely, and I would say that even. Some of the mentoring uh, opportunities that I had here locally, working with the Capital Leadership Institute Chicago for right. nearly a decade, I think was really good preparation for fatherhood. Although it's very different being a mentor right. and, and being a father, but working with young boys and understanding the challenges that they face at mm -hmm. later stages in their life, I think just has implanted some things, um, you know, sort of in the back of my mind that I try to, you know, reinforce as I work with my two boys as they're growing and developing because I also have a sense for where they're going to be, some of the challenges that they're going to face, decisions that they're going to have to be able to make Absolutely. on their own. Right. Uh, and also the the hope of where they can be and what they can contribute, right? And right. so um, I have a strong constitution around investing in some of the more difficult conversations and journeys early on with okay. the faith that those lessons and investments will pay off later uh, on. Right, right. I think this is a good point. And I think, uh, well, you know, like when I was reading about you, uh, you, you like the idea of uh, the folks that are mentors to really spend the time to, 
however little they invest don't don't ignore it just keep uh you know like investing in them you know like because, uh, because those little things you say they play uh, uh you know like a big role down the road correct they do they do and um and i'm beginning to hear that as i talk to some of the young people that i've mentored who are now kind of a decade down the road they're into their professional careers right but more acutely, I, I still have a very strong memory of those individuals along my journey who would share a mistake they made, share a win that they made, right. share an inflection point uh, right. in, in their journey mm -hmm. that just totally changed the way I perceived right. what the future could be for me. And I'm so grateful for them doing that they were willing to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, because they could have kept it to themselves. You know, right. and. Um, and so I try to think about that when I have those opportunities to not only work with my own kids, but talk to other young mm -hmm. people in their circle. Right. Uh, just trying not to overlook the opportunity to influence them. But there also is a challenge that comes with that. And that is that you're always, you're, you're, you're a model. It can be a good role model or a mm -hmm. negative role model. So you're right. trying to ensure that you are... Um, conscious that you're always on stage. None of us are perfect and it's right. hard to be that, you know, we all get impatient sometimes. Right, right, <laughs> right. So, right. Um, you know, that's, that's part, of, part of the journey as well. That's awesome. You know, but, you know, but, but those are the things that also like we like our kids to see that things are not always smooth. You know, there's always mm -hmm. things you got to work through, you know, like, you know, like you have to deal with, with circumstances, you know, sometimes not always just nice, nice. No, no, no. There's always, there's some hardships along the way, you know? Yes, yes. Absolutely, and, and 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 you know, Sarah, when I was reading about, uh, you know, like uh, your 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 background and also your your involvement with uh, with, you know, like along with the, with the mentorship, you know, they were talking about, according to the Association of American Medical Colleges, black men make up less than three percent of physicians. Um, so you know, so this is something that we like to uh, to 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 kind of remind folks that okay, listen, we don't have enough African Americans in the system. So uh, I think, you know, like with your memoir, um, you know, like you capture the complexes, you know, like the process, how it took you from, you know, uh, you know, like against the ads from a small city to become a national known healthcare, you know, like executive, can, 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 you know, this is something that uh, I'm sure you're playing part through mentorship, correct? Like you're trying yeah, to- Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And actually when I, um as I was getting through kind of the, the middle part of my writing of, of the book, Improbable MD, I, I came up with the title, you know, I was struggling with what that title would be, but I thought it best, best to capture not only the essence of my journey, but I think the journey of, of many um, men like us. And that right. is, you know, you know, when I was coming up, I didn't see uh, any physicians in my community that looked like me right. and shared, shared my journey. And so... Right. It took me a while to, to really reach a point where I felt like I could claim that dream, mm -hmm. articulate it to others without mm -hmm. a lack of confidence that mm -hmm. I could be successful and mm -hmm. run forward chasing that dream. Um, and so there were a lot of things that contributed to, to that process that allowed me to get there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been very much aware of those things as I've also worked with young people and worked with even my children. Uh, mm -hmm. to help ensure that we can compress, you know, mm -hmm. that journey a bit so right. that they don't have a, um, you know, imposter syndrome or right. a sense that they can't, um, you know, capture and realize their dreams. Because I think that's so, uh, so important. And you're right, you know, African Americans make up about 16.5% of the working adult population in the U.S., uh, but we're very much underrepresented in the physician workforce and especially uh, with black men, and black men have some of the lowest um, life expectancies and, and mm -hmm. poorest health outcomes of any right. subpopulations within uh, within the United States. Right. Um, and certainly, we know we have to be able to meet people uh, where they are when it comes to healthcare. And part of that is uh, bringing them health information from trustworthy sources. Mm -hmm. um, and our, and our history has been such that people do have some distrust of the healthcare system that, and we can't ignore that. Right. Um, and that's not to say that individuals who are not black men can't provide good care yeah. to black men because I believe that, that they can. Right. Um, but we also need to ensure that we've got good representation in the workforce. So if individual says, hey, I feel more comfortable seeing a black man as mm -hmm. a physician, then they have that access. And I think the same right. thing 
um, is, in, is, is the case for women, for example. You know, right. uh, medicine has long been a male-dominated uh, profession, and Absolutely. for a long time there weren't many women. Well, imagine uh, a woman who has you know, faced some trauma in her mm -hmm. life and does right. not want to see a male physician, doesn't right. feel comfortable sharing certain things with them, and how that might um, limit her access to health care and might also impact her health outcomes because she might delay seeking treatment right. uh, for certain conditions, right? And so right. when you're able to ensure that there's good representation of physician workforce so that she right. has that choice, right. that makes a difference in her life and makes a difference in the lives of individuals that love her, that depend on her. Mm -hmm. And I think the same exists for black men and it exists for individuals who don't speak English as a first language. Right. Um, so representation in the uh, healthcare workforce and the physician workforce, My I think is really an important component of achieving health equity. And I think we as a, as a community and as a society need to take those steps that are appropriate to help ensure that we have better representation. And that work, I don't think, is just along the pipeline or the pathway, right? So right. certainly there are things that we need to do in primary and secondary education, uh, mm -hmm. help and encourage more diversity along that path. There's mm -hmm. opportunities within uh, colleges and universities and pre-health advisors. And yes, there are current opportunities even at the medical school level, because we still right. have individuals who are interested, who are capable, who have the skills, right. um, but they're not getting through the door. Right. Uh, and so right. we've got to shine a light on those challenges and ensure that we're able to move those forward. And then once they get through the door, we have to ensure that we have an environment that supports and nurtures their development and completion of the training programs right. so they can get out and actually get into the community. And there's plenty of evidence that shows that um, you know, minoritized physicians are more likely to work in underserved uh, mm -hmm. communities. Right. Uh, and certainly when we look in many of our cities, uh, many of them are still racially segregated. Right. Um, right. And so we need to ensure that those pockets of, uh, you know, of our cities where there's a low density of physicians, that we're able right. to get more physicians, more other health care providers living and working in those communities and helping support uh, improved health outcomes both inside of the health care system and, and outside of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. And you know, uh, long answer to your question. <laughs> no, no, that's that. You know, you have covered many questions actually. You know, because they, you know, there was an issue. They say I was going to ask you about how, you know, like what are the pipelines for the minority? You, you know, like it seems to me like you have covered that as well, and how we can improve them going forward. Uh, you know, you know, because there, are, they, there is a group uh, of, I, I think it's called OB Health. Uh, you know, there's a group of doctors. Uh, you know, like you know, like minority doctors. They discussed, they discuss. Many many issues, you know, that affecting us, you know, like you know, from 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 the from the prostate, you know, like you know, like you know, like cancer from uh, from the mental health, and uh, they do this every second second Saturday of the month, and you know, I think their their goal is to kind of make things things you know, like people aware, because a lot of times, like you mentioned, you know, like uh, people they don't want to see, uh, you know, like a person of another race because of the history that they have, because of the age, what they've seen in the past. So, so they, you know, we have a lot of work to do, and I think you're doing a good job. And uh, and you, and and certainly your book will, you know, I think it will help with uh, with uh, showing the struggles that we went through, and that can inspire other folks to uh, not give up and you know, like achieve what you can do. You know, like you yeah, know, just absolutely. like what you did. Yeah, giving up is not is not what we want them to do. And in the book, I talk about even my uh, process of applying to medical schools and. Uh, you know, going to the mailbox and getting the envelopes, and you could tell the difference between a, a thin envelope. Eventually, you could tell the difference. <laughs> you could tell the similarity. Right. All of these are thin, which means, you know, there's probably not a good message uh, right. inside. And so, uh, so that definitely was, was part of my journey. I encourage people to, to check out the book and, and, and learn more about it. It, it, has a good in, it has a good ending. But I, I think the important thing there is for people to know the journey, right? right? And I think that's the opportunity here. How do, mm -hmm. how do we de demystify that experience? Because I right. think when um, folks get a chance to see you later in the journey, mm -hmm. there are certain assumptions that they may make about right. the, the path there, right? Mm -hmm. And my goal is to ensure that you know young people can identify with mm -hmm. the journey because they see those commonalities. They're like, hey, you know, they dealt with issue A and issue B and issue C. That's right. very similar to, to what I'm experiencing, and this mm -hmm. is how it was handled, and these are the people who provided some support. Right. Um, now I feel like I've got a roadmap 
some of which maybe I can use to help on my journey, on my journey today. And I think that's the obligation we have, right? Mm -hmm. As we pay forward, right. reach back, depending on how you want to um, describe it, but ensuring right. that we're helping encourage folks along the way. And for mm -hmm. me, you know, part of the, the driving force behind doing the book was that, you know, I've had the experience of doing mentoring kind of one-on-one, one-on-two, -on -one, one working with uh, young people uh, here locally. Mm -hmm. um, but what's the opportunity to have a similar impact at scale? And so mm -hmm. my hope is that uh, this book can be used as a tool to help motivate and inspire uh, young folks, even inspire parents, right? Because right. I, you know, I talk about, um, you know, being one of those kids that the teacher called home on the first day of school, right? Uh, when I was in elementary school. And right. so, you know, I want to give parents hope that mm -hmm. they're, some of their, their young boys and young girls who are energetic and curious mm -hmm. who might right. be getting in a little trouble there there's hope for them too right you know that <laughs> is okay. Out okay right <laughs> and, you know absolutely you know uh, that's that's fantastic and you know like you know, uh, you know i like how you you cover details how you know because a lot of times you know one of the topics that i'll be covering in my in my blogs or podcasts coming up i'll be talking about how we can we know we as fathers can can be helpful along the journey, not necessarily when we have kids, but before we have the kids, you know, those mm -hmm. appointments with your wife. I think you talk about how you, you had to, 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 to negotiate with your colleague because there's only two of you working and you have the news that, uh, you know, like, the, you know, like we have a newcomer, you know, like with your wife, uh, you yeah. know, she's about to deliver. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah, it was like, you know, I have a couple, couple of stories in there that, you know, yeah, you right. say the medicine is not the way it looks on TV, right? But sometimes Absolutely. you have these situations that, that right. come up. And right. yeah, I, w I told the story of being uh, out of town working in the uh, ER and right. uh, my wife's water broke. And so she, you know, she called me and I had to figure out how I was going to get on a plane right. and get back home <laughs> right. uh, and, and try to be there for the birth of, of my first child. So you could right. only imagine the... Um, the anxiety, the anxiety there and, yes. the, and the tension, right? Because, right. you know, when you're a, right. when you're a doctor, mm -hmm. uh, especially in emergency medicine, you know, you've met patients uh -huh. who most of the time meeting you for the first time. Right. You know, you build bond, you build trust there. Mm -hmm. um, you help them on their journey. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are, you know, significantly ill. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're like, hey, I, I got to go. <laughs> you know, so right. um, that is... That had its own challenges to right. it, and so uh, in the book, folks can learn more about the, the outcome of that. Right. Uh, but there are there are a couple of couple of stories like that. that right. Are right. Of, right. Wow, that, that's yes. the stuff that the doctors have to deal with. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I saw that, and I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. But I think you're very, you know, you're very descriptive there. I was, you know, it was very written. You know, like you know, like well written. You know, like we appreciate the book. Awesome. Awesome. And then also, sir, uh, this 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 big elephant in the room in terms of the bias. You know, I'm, you know. You know, now we have issues with the bias, uh, you know, that we we dealt with, but also our kids, they'll, they'll be dealing with that as well, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. can, we, can you just kind of maybe briefly touch upon that? You know, we have, you know, I think this was along the, you know, when we were talking about the, uh, you know, how some of the, us as old men, for instance, will prefer to see, uh, like, somebody like myself to kind of do a, uh, you know, excuse me, you know, like rector exam for instance, you know, like mm -hmm. with the BPH, I don't want to be, you know, like, like too descriptive, but you know what I mean? Like, some, you know, some guys, they will be worrying about that stuff, but it's your health. You need to have a checkup so you can, you know, uh, be in a, you know, like in a safe place. So how do we, how do we influence our fellow brothers uh, that, okay, like healthcare is cool, like, you know, like with the mental health, for instance, you know, like it is okay to, to like talk to someone, you know, not, just hold, don't hold everything in, you know, like with yourself, you know, like it's good to share with, uh, with, uh, you know, with the healthcare folks. Well, Dr. John, I think part of it is we have to be out there having these conversations mm -hmm. uh, in the community, right? talking to men, talking to brothers uh, right. about health. You know, I think it's, it's in part our job to make it cool, right? And then we also right. have to find those individuals who are icons in our community and our society who can also be co-messengers with us so that we Perfect. can break down some of those um, barriers that, that exist. Okay. I mean, distrust is real. When I looked at my own family, mm -hmm. um, I had many, many aunts and uncles on my mother's side, on my dad's side, not as many, my mom's side. She had 20 siblings. So I could see these huge patterns of where like the women would go to the doctor, <laughs> but the uncles wouldn't, they wouldn't even go visit somebody when they were in the hospital. 
And it took me a while to, to grapple with that, especially as my interest in, in science and medicine evolved and then I right. became a doctor and right. I'm like, oh, well, uncle so-and-so hasn't gone to see a doctor in how many years? You know, right. what is that all about? Mm -hmm. Well, then I have to think about what the experience of their dad was as he right. grew up and mm -hmm. what things he saw and heard about within healthcare and experimentation and right. other right. very real um, atrocities that, that right. occurred. And those things are passed down in you know, oral history within families. And right. so those men... And my family carry forward that negative bias towards right. healthcare, which was right. rooted in the experience of individuals like them over the years. Right. So now I, I come around as a kid that they knew, watched to grow up, who's right. now a doctor, someone that they trust, right. um, to really say, hey, these are the things that you need to do. These right. things are so you need to get. You know, your prostate exam, you need mm -hmm. to get screened for colorectal cancer. Right, exactly. You know, now, you know, if you've been a smoker for, you know, many years, you right. may need to have a CAT scan of your chest done at a certain right. frequency to see if there's any uh, signs of, <clears throat> excuse me, of lung cancer. Right. Uh, you know, having those conversations are really impactful. Right. And they're also powerful when people find something early and they're able to, you know, deal with it right. from a, a health perspective and then go right. on to live a, a healthy life. Right. So then promoting them, sharing that information within the village, within the family, oh, so that others feel safe and empowered to, to, to move forward. And I will tell you that even in the last few days, right. you know, one of my uncles was at the doctor mm -hmm. and he had them call me, you know. There you go. It's like, hey, yeah. I want my nephew on the phone to help, right. you know, advocate and listen and, and be awesome. a part of those conversations. Mm -hmm. And I'm always willing to do it because I know it's it's so important right. to right. address the very thing that you're talking about here. Right. Um, so we've got tremendous opportunities, mm -hmm. um, but we've got some challenges. Mm -hmm. The pandemic reminded us right. how real distrust is. I mean, right. remember how many people were dying right. in our communities from COVID because we had all this huge uh, pre-pandemic epidemic of chronic medical conditions right right at much higher risk for complications absolutely and massive you know folks dying you know generations being wiped out in families absolutely then vaccines becoming available mm -hmm. and then fear about the vaccine you know oh. and so it's it's a, a real challenge we played a big role in helping uh you know get people vaccinated and get over those fears Mm -hmm. That exercise, I think, is a, a significant reminder of, of the level of work that we have to do mm -hmm. every day uh, right. in communities across this nation to help close the gap in health equity and help reduce some of the disparities that we see. Absolutely. And, you know, like I remember what, you know, like what you're talking about in terms of uh, back, you know, like back in Louisiana specifically, for instance, when I was in New York, uh, you know, when I was doing, uh, you know, you know, this, uh, you know, the cardiology rotation and, you know, one of the uh, docs was was treating folks in Louisiana, but the way he was saying how he 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 wasn't uh, giving a good picture, you know. So, you know, I think you know, de you know, like definitely with the pandemic, a lot of folks were were really affected with this, you know, you mm -hmm. know, because you know, like, like you have big things going on that are chronically you gotta address those. But guess what? There's no room for it because of what's going on, you know, with the pandemic, or we just don't want to do it anymore, you know. Because I mean, you know, I'm so happy that uh, we are we are playing it part in, in trying to share this information and, and make folks aware of it, you know? Um, so, sir, you know, like I'm going to, you know, like divert a little bit, uh, you know, just in general so we can, co you know, cover things that I, you know, that I thought that we can, we should be covering in terms of the fatherhood. You know, what are the uh, ideas that you are sharing, you know, that you would like to share with fathers in terms of, you know, the best, the best that, that you know, like dad ideas, you know, what are the best ideas for the best dad? You know, like if you want to be the best dad, what are the ideas you think? Oh, man, that is a huge question. I, I have to humbly state that I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, am, I am still figuring it out. I will say that um, I'll tell you one of the challenges. Okay. Uh, one of the challenges that, that I faced is really trying to... Um, Balance ensuring that I'm raising young men mm -hmm. who are going to be prepared to not only contribute significantly over the arc of their lifetime and their careers and, and whatever right. professions they, they go in, but also that they have the um, level of resiliency mm -hmm. and situational awareness mm -hmm. that is imperative for young black men to be successful mm -hmm. in life. There's so many 
challenges that will <clears throat> that will come to them, mm -hmm. um, and and trying to prepare them for that in a way that maintains their level of intellectual independence. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, try not to project my biases based on my experience well, on them. Point. So giving them right. the ability to think critically, right. uh, to evaluate a situation, mm -hmm. um, to also have some historical context without connecting all the dots for them in a way that, again, may be projecting a bias on them versus allowing them to critically view a situation. Right. At the same time, not letting them get so far out there that they've got to figure everything out on their own because there's some things they, that they're going to need to connect the dots fairly quickly because right. it could, can put themselves at risk. And so if you think about the, the environment that we've been in, mm -hmm. um, a.k.a. you know George Floyd and all the um, videos and things right. that we've seen right. um, in this digital era that represent... Um, some of the discrimination and challenges that we've seen in the, um, both in our communities and in the criminal justice system that are not new, but right. the ability to digitally transmit and expose them is just phenomenally different than it's been before. Right. It, it, gets, it, it causes young people to ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. right, right. <laughs> uh, and, and expose their curiosities. And then they have right. conversations with their friends about it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, have, I find myself having to try to ask them questions that challenge them to think a little bit more objectively about the things that they're hearing. Right. Um, and also to try to evaluate different elements of the situation right and then also to share with me how they may handle it and then right. i think that gives me the opportunity as a father to provide them with with some advice right um that's that has been really challenging and mm -hmm. then especially in the political environment where you right. hear these messages or campaign seasons come in right and it's, it's hard to shelter and box off kids from those messages right you know? so they you know we just finished uh you know big election here not too long ago and mm -hmm. so we know that some of the themes on, you know, one side of the political aisle may have focused on one topic right. on the other side of the political aisle focused on another. Right. Um, and one of those focuses was around crime, but the right. images around crime looked consistently the same way, right? Right. And so that sent messages that had the kids asking questions and it kind of forces a conversation. Um, so I think, I think those are some of the challenging pieces. I hope that I'm doing a good job at it. Time will tell. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, it, it's, um, it's one that's just required a lot of energy, a lot of intention, a lot of, uh, a lot of effort along the way. And I think we all believe that, um, when we as parents have an obligation to right. have those conversations so that we're raising a, a generation of young people who truly can lead us forward, can help us not repeat some of the the errors and injustices of our past, you know, as, right. as a nation. Right. Um, but it requires us to be thoughtful and to invest in our young people to, to do that. Oh, that is awesome. I think, uh, you know, this is very, you know, is, is a very good advice because also it will cover many things, you know, from only, you know, not only you, you know, discussing with them and, and and making sure that you cover what they, they might be missing through those discussions with them, uh, you are also creating a bond along the road. You know, you know, you know, you know, mm -hmm. you know, along the way. So that bond is very important because through that they will be learning even more things that uh, they they did not expect to learn from you. And so uh, that is an awesome thing to do as a dad. Thank you so much. You know, we will we will appreciate. You know, like we are we appreciate that idea. And and you know, like. You know, in terms of fatherhood, you know, uh, can you speak a little bit about, uh, you know, like your dad and maybe say how was it different between your interaction with them versus your interaction with your kids? You know, what is, uh, you know, just briefly, I, you know, I understand time is almost uh, not, you know, you know, like against us right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my dad and I have a great relationship. I was not raised in the same home uh, as my dad, but uh, always had good interactions with him. I think my fondest memories with him are, are going fishing and, and hunting and something that we still uh, like to do when we uh, have time to, to spend together during the holidays. Um, I will tell you some of the most um, intense time we spent together was during my, my swim team training uh, in middle school and, <clears throat> excuse, middle school and high school. And so um, my, my dad had a, th a certain thought process around how he, you know, transmitted, how he would translate, you know, his 
his his view on something to me and it didn't always land in the nicest way but that was just his style and so right. having to learn how to ex accept people where they are and, and get mm -hmm. that translation of love was important to me because even in uh you know in the adult environment people aren't going to always spoon feed you things the way that you want to hear it right but that doesn't also mean that the information they're giving to you is is bad or is harmful that's right. just kind of the style and, and approach and so one of the things that I learned from him is to to be adaptive, to figure mm -hmm. out, you know, how do you play in the space, you know, where you are, what mm -hmm. tools do you need to, to operate on that particular level. Right. We, we have a great relationship. And then, as you know, as as children become adults and parents become seniors, right. roles can kind of switch around a little bit. Right. And so right. we, <laughs> we have fun awesome. <laughs> with our right. with our conversation. Well, that is very awesome. And, you know, you know, like I'm sure like, you're, you know, like you're uh, like like you're teaching your kids about swimming as well because I know you're very is you're you're all about swimming you know that's awesome you know you know like you know like you're like when you teach your kids or whenever you're 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 monitoring kids with swimming how do you teach the kids to handle loss you know because I'm sure yeah. that that comes about a lot of times as a judge you know you well you know I got I got involved in, in swimming as a judge primarily because my kids started com uh, competing in swimming and I needed something to do besides sit in the stand screaming. So I said, all right, let me get out here and, and help be visible and support them. Right. <clears throat> it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. My um, my oldest kid was very fast at a younger age, and so mm -hmm. he won lots of races. His other brother's two years younger, so he watched him a lot. And so when when the youngest son, Reed, began to swim, mm -hmm. he wasn't winning his races all the time, but he expected that every time he touched the wall, he was going to get out, he's going to get a prize, a ribbon, and a win. Right. <laughs> and that didn't happen. But his big brother was standing there to congratulate him and right. encourage him, but he used to pout and mm -hmm. elbow his big brother and right. stomp off. It was the funniest <laughs> thing to watch. <laughs> right, right, right. And then it seemed like after a year or so, he just kind of mellowed out, mm -hmm. and then he wasn't as sensitive about whether he was winning or losing, but he was enjoying himself and, and having fun. You know, part of what we deal with with uh, with losses and disappointments, you know, we all have feelings, so we acknowledge those feelings, and then we right. try to understand, okay, what could we have done better? And, and swimming is a very technical sport. Right. Um, and now, you know, we have, you know, cameras and video, so we can go back and watch, you know, roll the tape. Right. These are some of the things that you did well. These are some of the things where there would be opportunities for improvement. Right. And then also you can kind of watch your competition, see what they're doing, and then get some some uh, tips on what you can do better to be competitive. Right. Those are skills that I think are totally transferable outside of swimming and outside of sports. Exactly. Um, and so it's not all about winning and not every day is going to be your best day. Right. Uh, but it's the effort that you put in. It's the attention uh, to details. Right. Uh, and then, you know, for longer races, you know, you have, it's a strategy, right? right? So it's not necessarily just how you start, but right. also how you finish. Absolutely. So these life lessons, I think, are, are woven into the sports piece. Absolutely. Uh, and I really enjoy the opportunities to kind of pull those out and use those analogies as we're looking at other things that we might be discussing Thank you. as father right. and sons. Absolutely. I think this is awesome. We, you know, we can share these to our kids whenever they go through that and and you know, like you know, just you know, like making that marriage with with the life as well. That's fantastic, sir. I, I you know, we have spent all this uh, time speaking about fatherhood and everything. Anything else you want to share about the you know, just just in general about the book and you know where they can get it from and uh, just anything else uh, that you yeah, want to share? Yeah, absolutely. With? So here's a image of the book here, Improbable MD from the Bayou to the Boardroom. Encourage right. people to. Uh, check it out. You can get it on Amazon. It's also available on Barnes and Noble. Um, electronically, you can get it through Apple Books as well as through Amazon Kindle. Um, if, certainly, if you want to learn more about me, you can visit my website. It's www.drderekrobinson.com. Uh, right. And you can also follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is the same at drderekrobinson.com. Awesome. Doc, thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. Thank you, sir. And we'll be sharing all that information as well in, uh, you know, like in, uh, you know, like in, you know, in, you know, in our notes. So thank you again, you know, like the Robinson. And I really look forward to having you back anytime. You know, you know, this is your home. You're welcome back to share any other, uh, because there's so much we can talk about. Can you, you know, from the from from your bio, we could have just covered one topic, you know, today and another time, another, you know. So there's so much we can talk about, you boss, and uh, I look forward to having you again, sir. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. You have a good day, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help today, sir. So that.
you know, like the, you know, like that was Dr. Robinson, and uh, you know, please go ahead and uh, check out the episode on on thatpuzzles dot com, and also we have this, uh, the, you know, this podcast in all these the uh, the social medias, and also uh, feel free to comment on the website from what we spoke about. If you have any questions, we can share with him as well, and uh, don't forget to 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 like follow him from his uh, from from from, uh, from his social media and from my social media as well. Uh, you know, we look forward to having you, uh, you know, like again, and please share this with your friends and colleagues because this information is critical to uh, to everyone in the community, really, especially us, as you can see from what we spoke about. So thanks again, Dr. Robinson. You know, like I appreciate your time today, boss. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to pause here. Stop.